What's up everybody, this is Donnie aka Elevated with another video on behalf of Dota Alchemy and this is going to be the patch notes for 7.22d which was just released at the end of the Epicenter Major and this is probably going to be the patch that TI has played on. So the following notes will determine the meta for the biggest esports tournament in the world so let's go ahead and hop right into it. And it looks like it's basically just hero balance changes. So first of all we have Batrider, Sticky Napalm, cast range has been reduced at all levels except for level 4. And this is really just a nerf to support bat rider and early game bat in general but mostly support bat rider because you generally max sticky anyway so off lane bat will probably get there pretty quickly uh, but yeah definitely a much needed nerf to this hero which has been more and more prevalent in sort of a very flexible role and we'll need some nerfs before we head into ti bloodseeker base armor has been increased by one which gives him a pretty high i want to say it's six base armor at this point I am blood seeker. yeah six base armor which makes him quite tanky uh, he's already cr pretty tanky in the early game we might see him coming back into the meta a bit more in the mid lane perhaps uh, i think the hero is already pretty good he's just a little bit underexplored in the current meta bounty hunter base health regen has been increased by uh 0.75 from 0.5 to 1.25 and this will make him more tanky as well he already has quite a high base armor so the hp regen benefits that as well shuriken toss cooldown has been reduced by one second i think that this hero is reasonably good i feel like he didn't really get changed that much from when he was considered to be overpowered some nerfs for sure but more so that the meta shifted away from bounty hunter being relevant that being said, we are seeing a lot of tri-lanes coming back into the meta in the professional scene, and that means that roaming has an opportunity to come back as well to punish tri-lanes and pressure the other lanes. Centaur Warrunner double edge base damage has been reduced at all levels except for level 4, so nerfs to early game Centaur. Stampede Monocost has been increased to scale from 150 up to 250 now as you level it up. So no nerfs to retaliate, which is a little bit interesting considering that seems to be probably his most overpowered early game skill allowing you to take towers with like plus 200 damage when you're like level 7 which is pretty ridiculous that being said the stampede mana cost is going to mean that centaur is definitely going to struggle with mana problems um, until he gets an aghanim scepter to increase his mana pool uh, obviously double edge doesn't cost mana so that being his most spammable skill isn't going to affect it but just the fact that stampede now costs a lot more and this is a strength hero with a pretty low mana pool is going to be something that you need to keep an eye on chen hand of god heal has been reduced and divine favor active cooldown has been increased so more nerfs to chen which was definitely one of the most banned heroes at epicenter and just a hero that is generally regarded as extremely strong in the professional scene clink's strength gain has been increased agility gain has been reduced burning army spawn interval has been improved so a little bit more tanky, a little bit less damage, and then the Burning Army will pop up a little bit faster, so it's a little bit harder to run away from. Uh, this hero is probably in a pretty good spot. I think he already does enough damage, so the agility gain is not that big of a deal, and making him a little bit more tanky is going to help him uh, just survive in these fights longer. So I think Clinks is an interesting hero. We'll see if he's relevant in the professional scene or not, but... I think he's he's in a pretty good spot at the moment. Darkseer base movement speed has been reduced a little bit, and base strength has been reduced by one. Not huge nerfs to a hero that is considered to be one of the best offlaners in all of Dota, but that's not surprising considering that the meta is quite wide at the moment. So we'll definitely see Darkseer continue to be picked regardless, and um, the base movement speed will will matter early on. But you have Surge, so it's not something you have to worry about too much. Dark Willow Bramble Maze cooldown has been reduced from 25 to 20. So just a slight buff to Dark Willow. We saw a little bit of this hero. I think we'll probably see more of it. It's a very good team fighting hero. Pairs quite well with a hero like Mars. And depending on the draft can have a huge impact from the four roll. Dazzle, level 15 talent, increased from 125 cast range to 200 cast range. And also the Shadow Wave heal damage has been buffed by 10. So 
This hero remains relatively unchanged. He still has the EXP gain talent. The cast range, 200 cast range is pretty insane. I don't really know where he sits in the meta at the moment. Seems like the EXP gain would push him towards being a core. But we didn't see a whole lot of Dazzle being played just because there seems to be better supports and better mids as well. Disruptor cat attack range has been increased by 25, so he's a little bit better at harassing in the lane. Drought Ranger marksmanship bonus damage is now treated as regular single instance of damage that can be crit. Wow, okay, that's interesting. Marksmanship bonus damage has been increased from 120 to scaling from 120 up to 140. So that's a little bit scary considering that uh, going Daedalus on this hero is quite good. And now it is extra good to get a crit just because you can crit with the bonus damage. So a slight buff to Drow, which was considered to be pretty bad after not being able to one-hit Ancients. Still, it's just a hero that pumps out a ton of damage, buffs all of your ranged heroes. Not a whole lot different with Drow. Ember Spirit Aghanim Scepter now reduces mana cost to 25 instead of 0. That's probably much needed. This was arguably the best Aghanim Scepter in the game when it was added, giving Ember the 5 spirits. And so... Having a bit of a mana cost will mean that you can actually shut him down when he has an eggs instead of being completely unable to stop him from getting out of basically every situation. Um, so mana burn will definitely have some value against Ember Spirit now. Searing Chain's total damage has been reduced um, at all the early levels slightly and uh, remains the same at the max level and level 25 talent reduced the Remnant Restore time to minus 20 seconds to minus 25. So just kind of nerfing that late game Ember a little bit, as well as the early game from Searing Chains. Much needed, this hero will still be picked. It's still extremely good. This is not enough to take it out of the meta at all. And uh, it was one of the most picked heroes at Epicenter with good reason. Enchantress base armor has been increased by one and Nature's Attendance heal per Wisp has been increased. Um, to scale from 10 to 13. So just more healing power on this hero. The armor increase is nice because she has such a low armor. I'd have to ask Jenkins whether he thinks this makes a big difference or not, but I think that the hero is, is something that could be explored. It just hasn't really been yet. Enigma Black Hole Monocost has been increased to 300 up to 500. And the talents, level 20 talent has been reduced the Eidolon damage as well as the number of conversions at 25. Enigma is still an incredibly strong hero. The Monocost is definitely going to hurt getting the Refresher. I mean, 500 mana twice plus the Refresher mana is almost unsustainable. It's going to be pretty rough. But the hero itself still does what it has always done, which is allow you to pull the lane back, get a bunch of farm, and then have this incredibly game-winning ultimate once you have a Blink BKB. So that's all still relevant, but definitely much needed nerfs to the hero to make him less of a late game threat. It kind of just felt like if you have this hero and you get to the late game, you just win automatically. Might still be the case, but you won't be quite as good. Grimstroke Soulbind Slow is now reduced to 10 at all levels instead of scaling it to 30. This is probably needed. 30% uh, slow. That pierces BKB is pretty insane. And, uh, you know, you almost don't even need the slow necessarily just because you bind two units together, which kind of slows them down since they have to run together anyway. Huskar inner fire damage has been increased to scale even better. Uh, this is a hero that was pretty much completely ignored. He doesn't really function in the way that mid laners normally function right now, which is the ability to shove out the wave and then go rotate around power runes. Huskar is a pretty slow moving hero. He's more of the win condition in the one role, which is not something that a lot of teams are focusing on at the moment. Invoker at level 15 talent has been increased the cold snap cooldown reduction to 15 seconds. Level 20 talent has increased alacrity damage and speed to plus 50. So kind of buffs to the, the Wex side of things. So with the cold snap duration talent, you can actually keep somebody permanently cold snap because it reduces the cooldown to five seconds and the duration is six at max level. So that's pretty brutal. Uh, if there's no way to remove the cold snap, you can essentially permanently lock somebody down. That sounds pretty ridiculous. That being said, uh, Invoker still struggles with being the one roll in the mid lane. 
But if you are going for this sort of roaming cold snap invoker, I think there is some potential there, especially with how strong this talent now is. And when you contrast it with the Forge Spirit summoned, you're probably going to just lean towards going this cold snap cooldown duration, even potentially going Ex Exor, just because that's so, so powerful if there is no BKB or ability to remove the cold snap. IO talents, level 20 talent change from Tether Grant Scepter bonus to plus 15 armor. Wow, so they just completely removed the Scepter bonus, which means that IO Gyro is probably dead, and that means that Gyro is probably dead unless they buffed him, but we're already on I, so they didn't. Uh, so that combo is uh, is gone, <laughs> basically. Um, I think the IO, you know, it's the hero is just so unique in what it does. We're still going to see this picked, but we're going to have to find some new uh, pairings with the IO, and that certainly hurts teams that like to run this combo, like Liquid. Uh, Keeper of the Light. Chakra magic cooldown has been the cooldown reduction reduction <laughs> cooldown reduction has been increased from minus three to six up to minus four to seven. Will o' wisp unit movement speed has been increased. Unit movement speed. Well, I guess it's the how far they're pulled, I suppose. Uh, so it black holes them a little bit faster than it does normally, or a little bit farther than it used to. Uh, Lich's Sinister Gaze cooldown has been reduced from 30 scaling to 24 to 30 scaling to 21. And Talent level 20 increased from plus 150 cast range to plus 200. Level 20 Talent increased from minus 2 second frustration to minus 3. I mean, this doesn't really seem like enough to really change the hero at all. Sinister Gaze cooldown is not even that much better than it was before. This hero is definitely kind of in a weird spot. He doesn't seem to do enough as a five to be very relevant. And uh, I wouldn't say anything has changed. I think everybody's probably fine with that. The hero's kind of boring to watch anyway. Luna, level 10 talent increased from plus 15 attack speed to plus 20 versus the cast range getting increased by 100. 400 cast range is actually insane. I, <laughs> I feel like somebody's gonna have to experiment with this at some point. 400 cast range is absolutely ridiculous. If you, you know, maybe start buying some disabling items or something like that, sounds pretty, pretty strong, but I don't know exactly how you would play that. Level 25 talent increased the lifesteal from 25 to 30. So they buffed both the potential of a support-ish offlane Luna, as well as the carry Luna slightly. Mars level 15 talent reduced from plus 30 damage to plus 25. That is not a huge change for this hero. Um, that being said, he is a hero that looks extremely good when the player playing him is good, and he's not nearly as imbalanced as people may originally have thought. He is quite good. He will still be picked, but this damage change is not going to make much of a difference on the hero. Marana Leap Charge Replenished... Marana, Leap Charge Replenish Time has been reduced from 60 scaling to 30 to 45 scaling to 30. So early levels of Leap replenish much faster now. That's quite nice. This hero has been quite weak for a long time. And Starstorm Scepter Recharge Time has been reduced by one second as well. So you can do a little bit more damage and also get your leaps and, and move around the map a little bit better on this hero. I don't think necessarily that this hero will come back into the meta unless we see good Marana pairings being popular, uh, but she's just a little bit weak in terms of the ability to roam. Um, maybe we'll see some mid Marana potentially, but other than that, I think it's still going to be relatively untouched in the professional scene. Morphling attribute shift bonus agility and strength has been rescaled from four scaling to seven to one scaling to seven. So early game morph getting a pretty significant nerf. Remember that four uh, bonus agility and strength applies kind of double just because you can shift it so definitely going to make more flings laning stage significantly worse which is pretty important considering that this hero is just almost impossible to lane against if you get him a couple of early levels ogre magi multicast item multicast buffer range has been increased from 200 to 600 i'm not entirely sure what that means i guess it's probably 
that the if if you're like multicasting a Midas or a Dagon or something like that, it seeks for targets in a much bigger range now than it used to. I actually don't know what this buffer range means. Buffer would indicate that it is a it would seek cl closer to you because it's going to constrict the range, but that seems worse than seeking wider. So I'm not I'm not totally sure. But multicast bloodlust radius has been increased so you're going to get bloodlust to a wider range around you and the multicast interval has been increased by 0.1 second so i guess there will be slightly longer stuns from a fire blast because there's a longer time for them to be multicasted I guess so. Health talents at level 15 has been increased by 50, and the damage has been increased to 100 at level 15. 100 damage talent on this hero. Somebody's got to run it as a core. It's got to happen at some point. Oracle Fortune's End Monocos has been increased by 25. So less efficient as far as harassing early on. Um, hero is still quite popular in the pre professional scene, um, so a little bit of a needed nerf to that. Phantom Assassin, level 10 talent increased from 150 health to 200, making it quite tanky. You probably just go the health every game instead of the 15 damage. I mean, 15 damage, it's, it's nice on, on PA, but 200 health this early on in the game means you can be greedier with your itemization. Uh, seems pretty good. Fight a little bit earlier as well. Level 20 talent increased from 20% Blur Evasion to 25, and level 25 talent increased from 5% Coup de Gras to 10% additional Coup de Gras. They were really trying to get you to stop picking the triple stifling dagger. And I mean, with 10% increased coup de gras, that is a huge increase in terms of your DPS. Probably still not enough to cancel out the stifling dagger, just because, I mean, you're looking at 3x DPS on the dagger versus an additional 5% from coup de gras. But that is, if, if you really just need to focus down one target, I suppose coup de gras is probably better. Phantom Lancer Juxtapose Illusion Damage has been increased from 18% to 20%. Pudge Flesh Heap Health Regen has been increased again. Wow, this build that Jenkins is obsessed with where you go Flesh Heap level 1 is uh, even better than it was before. Maybe we really will see Pudge offlane starting to be a thing. I know that he's going to be extremely happy about this. And the level 10, level 15 talent has increased the Rot Slow from 16% to 20%. So that is pretty significant. I know that people were already considering going the rod slow because it makes the slow so strong. An additional 4% is pretty busted. Uh, the lifesteal is obviously quite nice, but you're already going to be tanky because of the flesh heap and because you go for hood and stuff like that. So the rod slow seems incredibly good at level 15. Pugna life drain damage has been increased at level 2 and 3. Not a huge change to the hero. He's still a very niche hero. Uh, that is mostly ignored in the professional scene. Ricky base health regen has been reduced. So they actually nerfed him. Interesting. As far as being able to roam or offlane or whatever. Cloak and Dagger fade delay has been reduced as well. Oh, okay. Cloak and Dagger provides HP regen now. So encouraging you to level this up, which I think a lot of people already were doing anyway. Um, and it basically, it just balances out. If you, if you take one point in Cloak and Dagger... At level 1, you're going to have the same HP region that you had before, but then you're also going to be able to scale it up a bit as you level Cloak and Dagger. So, a little bit of an interesting change to Ricky. Level 15 talent increased the smoke screen cooldown by one second as well. You know, again, this hero, he just struggles from the fact that he can't farm, he can't push waves, he can't really gank until he has a Diffusal Blade. I don't really think that anything's going to change, but we will see if people start to roam with him or figure out some way to play the hero, but most likely not much has changed for Ricky. Slardar Aghanim Scepter regen bonus has been increased from 25 to 35, and the talent has been increased HP regen at level 10 to 8. Talent increased HP at level 15 from 300 to 350. I think this hero is already quite good, so more buffs to the hero. This is somebody to look out for in the offlane role for sure. Um, really good against heroes like Lifesteal or Juggernaut, which are pretty popular. Spirit Breaker Nether Strike bonus damage has been reduced. Unfortunate. 
Not a huge change, though. This hero still does Spirit Breaker things for the most part. Sven base damage is reduced by two. Storm Hammer cooldown has been increased pretty significantly. Oops. And War Cry shield base health has been reduced from 60 uh, to 150, scaling from 60 to 120 instead. So they basically just took away one level of War Cry at the max level. Um, you know, these things all hurt Sven in the early game. I think it's still kind of just the same hero, though, because everything scales the way it used to, and this hero is still one of the best late-game cores and, and farming cores in all of Dota. I don't really think a lot changes in that regard, so I think the hero is still probably going to be pretty popular, but the, the base damage I know is something that a lot of people will probably care about in the competitive scene because it makes it a little bit harder to last it and trade early on in the game. Techie's base intelligence has been increased by three, so three extra damage, more mana, more mana regeneration. Uh, is Techie's going to be the hero of the tournament? Pretty unlikely, but I'm sure that there are some niche Techie's pickers out there that are pretty happy about a buff to their favorite hero. Templar Assassin Refraction no longer provides bonus damage when attacking allied units. Wow. That is pretty rough, because that means that it's much harder for TA to, um, to dominate a lane by using Refraction to deny. And I also would assume that it reduces the damage that you are spilling off of the denied unit to the enemy hero. So that's actually a pretty big deal for TA being able to dominate lanes and a pretty significant nerf to the hero in the laning stage, which is where TA tends to thrive. Big rip and pepperonis to that hero. Terrorblade Conjure Image incoming damage has been reduced by 40%. Uh, so slight buff to TB. Tinker base intelligence increased by two. Heat seeking missile cooldown reduced. Why did they keep buffing this hero? <laughs> I really, really want it to be relevant in the professional scene. I can't imagine why, but uh, you know, just another buff to Tinker. This is like five, six patches in a row. More damage, better laning, uh, more spammable damage in the lane as well. I'm going to be banning this hero every single game in my pubs for sure. Underlord Pit of Malice AoE has been increased by an additional 10. And talents have been reworked somewhat. Movement speed from 25 to 30 at level 10. Uh, 15 talent has changed the cast range from 100 to 125. And atrophy attack bonus damage. Oh, wow. Interesting. So instead of getting a plus 15 atrophy attack bonus damage from heroes, you get an additional plus 7 atrophy permanent bonus damage. So every time you get kills with the atrophy aura on people you're going to get an additional seven bonus damage that is pretty interesting considering if you pair that with the attack speed at level 70 i feel like that could be an interesting way to play underlord he's already very good at dominating lanes and if you get him snowballing somehow he could become incredibly dangerous in the late game as a right clicker that's good. I, I I think the hero is um, a little bit missed in the meta. He provides some pretty interesting things. And, you know, with the return of Tri-Lanes, you might see Underlord spamming out waves with his Firestorm as sort of a um, solo offlaner, potentially empowering a team to Tri-Lane. Vengeful Spirit base intelligence has been increased by two, and base damage has been increased by two. This is good for early game Venge, who is pretty awful, considering she has very low base damage to trade with and can only use magic missile like one time before she's out of mana so this will probably rectify that a little bit but again the hero is a very niche pick in that support role viper poison attack damage per missing health has been buffed so right click viper getting a little bit of a buff visage soul assumption damage has been increased from 65 to 75 per stack and the talent level 20 increased the soul assumption damage as well by five um, pretty niche hero. All right, the big one here, Warlock Fatal Bond's cooldown has been increased uh, very significantly in the early game. 12 additional seconds, 8, uh, 4, scaling up to 18 where it was. Fatal Bond's no longer bounces on Roshan, so you can't use Roshan as a huge uh, damage transfer unit, which is, you know, it's probably good. Fatal Bond's considers units with other Fatal Bond's as lower priority, so... 
doubling up fatal bonds is not as easy as it used to be it'll still work if those units are the only ones available so you can still double fatal bonds heroes but it's not as easy to get a bunch of creeps plus heroes with fatal bonds um, the more units there are the worse it is to fatal bonds uh, twice still i think the hero is pretty strong uh, especially if the meta continues to focus on team fighting uh, but much needed nurse to this hero because fatal bonds is just such an incredible spell when it comes to team fighting and finally zeus base armor increased by one another buff to zeus in the laning stage static field damage has been increased from five percent to six percent scaling up to an additional one percent at each level i think this hero is probably underrated perhaps even just straight up broken he does so much damage um, the build of going for lightning bolt into static field is now even better so really good at playing in position for zeus potentially just a huge a huge 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 amount of extra damage that you can pump out and uh, definitely a hero to keep an eye on so that is it not a ton of massive changes i wouldn't say that any hero has been completely ruined uh, maybe io the most out of any of the heroes just because the wisp gyro is pretty much dead but should make for a pretty interesting meta for ti let me know what change is getting you the most excited in the comment section below and uh good luck in your pubs this week we'll have some you know meta reports and stuff talking about what we think are the best heroes once we get some games under our belt and uh good luck in your games We'll see you in another video very soon.